state of Illinois has declared a gubernatorial disaster proclamation in response to COVID-19 outbreak. And all of the village of Glendale Heights is covered by the disaster area. In light of the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the village president of the village of Glendale Heights has determined that an in-person meeting for the November 22nd, 2021 village board and committee of the whole uh, meeting is not practical or prudent in light of the disaster. All of the trustee of the village board participating in the November 20, 2021, sorry, 22, 2021 village board meeting wherever there physical location shall be verified and determined that they can hear one another and can hear all discussion and testimony during the meeting. Signed, Chaudhary and Kokhar, village president of the village of Glendale Heights, dated November 22nd, 2021. I would like to call this village board meeting of Thursday should be uh, Monday, Monday, November 22nd, 2021, to order. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mayor Coker? Yes. Trustee Schmidt? Here. Trustee Siddiqui? Here. Trustee Light? Here. Trustee Marantano? Here. Trustee Pojak? Here. Trustee Schroeder? Here. Please sir, have a, and join me in saying Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we will continue with Mayor, you can make a comment before yes. before we start the meeting. Yeah, once I don't think you make a comment before we start the meeting. Oh, let me let me read uh, this paragraph, then I will close. Okay. <laughs> we will continue with number A, a public discussion, discussion of the agenda items. Those wishing to address the village board will have a time limit of five minutes. The board reserves the right to answer any question raised during public discussion at the end of the meeting or at the subsequent sub, uh, meeting. I would uh, ask uh, Ro uh, Chief of Police, Roger Peppers, to stand up and explain the rules, how people can conduct you know, their behavior during. Roger Peppers. Yes, you, please go ahead. So what you were going to say? No, no, you can say. I would, I would just say something else. To this meeting, guys, let's everybody respect everybody in this room. Use civility when we're talking. We have a lot of emotions that are going on here, but yeah, I need to respect everybody. So wait for your turn to talk. We have a public discussion that everybody will get a chance to talk. Um, like the mayor said, everybody gets five minutes. And then let the board do their discussion. Okay? Thank you. Mayor, and I want to make one correction. You mentioned George, uh, Roger Pappas. His name is George Pappas. Oh, I'm sorry, George Pappas. George, George Pappas, sorry. Okay, uh, number second, the, uh, I will after that. Number second, uh, any person who is making movie, he, should, he or she should keep distance, and he or she cannot pinpoint any person. If somebody is subject, is, uh, is in violation, he or she will be removed if he or she does not be order, is subject to arrest. Yes, Mr. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I have two things to say. Uh, since the last chaotic meeting we had last week or two weeks ago, what was the, uh, is this meeting strictly for the American Cricket Organization? In this meeting, we are going to uh, talk about, our, uh, we are just going to discuss uh, between ACC and village agreement, how it will proceed, what are the conditions, is not voting, there's, today's, there's no voting. 
and if we do not reach to any agreement, then board will decide that we will open this to other parties, other teams or not. It depends on what board decides. Okay. Yes. Here, yes. was that what was said at the last meeting for this meeting? What was, what was discussed at the last meeting, the motion was <coughs> to discuss the terms of the agreement with the ACC. Um, but in, in, in that encompasses talking about everything in general as well. Um, the pros and the cons. Uh, but it is specifically for the terms of the agreement with the ACC. Okay. And, that, and that's what it, the mayor indicated. It's for the terms of the agreement for the ACC. Okay. I, I just want to say, I had some phone calls. And uh, people are calling me saying, what the hell is going on with the village? Okay, I, I don't like comments from my, my residents. Call me up for the last two meetings from the circus. Barney and Bailey, everybody screaming, people running around. That's not the way we conduct business with the village. This village will move on. We are going to keep on moving as a village board, and we're going to do what we have to do to keep this village running. I just want to make sure that the residents know that because... There's many out there that are upset with what is going on with this board. So I just want to make that clear, and I'm hoping that everybody tonight acts respectable. Say what you have to say. I don't care if there's 100 people. Just come up to the podium, say what you have to say, and then we'll move on to the meeting. The next person, and then, and then we'll decide what the mayor and the board is going to do. Okay? All right, thank you. New business. No. Nope. Mayor, we, we're at public discussion. It's public discussion of agenda. <coughs> you read the. Oh, I did already. Yeah, but now we have to let the public talk. <coughs> now it's the public. Yes. <coughs> so if you want to ask him to come to the podium. Yes, anyone from public, if he or she wants to come, please raise your hand and come to podium. You have five minutes. It's just talk about cricket ground, teams, terms and condition, what you want regarding nothing, no, no other issue shall be discussed, no screaming, no yelling. If somebody screams or yell, we will act according to law. No exception. It's yes, Mr. Epstein. Mayor, while Mr. Epstein is coming to the podium, uh, we have an email request for the board meeting tonight, for the um, public discussion. To make a comment, Doug? Yes. Yeah. If you want to let him read that first. Yeah. Yes. So this is from uh, Mohammed Danish Malik. Uh, hello, board member. As a resident of Glendale Heights for more than 12 years, my suggestion and question to the board members are, one, don't give nor take all three grounds from ACC. Give American Cricket Conference at least two grounds to run the league, Please give one ground to other leagues so we can change, so we can see the change that Mr. Coker, Mayor, parentheses, mentioned. Two, my second question for board members is that since 20 plus years, Mr. Barney had Glendale Heights grounds, started with one, then two, and now three grounds. How much does he pay? How much does he pay the village of Glendale Heights for the grounds? This year, Mr. Barney charged $2,600 for day season and 1,000 for night season for each team. As a taxpayer, I would like to know. I'll be listening to you guys through Zoom. Thanks in advance, Mohammed from Glendale Heights. Yes. Yes, Mr. Epstein. Thank you. Uh, Christopher Epstein, Club Drive, Glendale Heights, Illinois. Uh, the first thing that I would like to bring up, I'd like to see everything brought in house, including the Cricket League, every other sport in this town is run through the park district. There's no reason that everything, from an accounting standpoint, that is the best source to assure what people are paying and who's getting what paid out of it. I ran part of baseball, and at that time, we were providing the information to the village at that particular time, uh, and I'd like to see the same thing with the cricket, whatever it goes so that everybody has a pear shape. There's a very good accounting of what's going on. 
no under the table of anything or anything like that. So from what I've seen, there's been, you know, some shady things in the past with regards to various sports within this town, and I want to put a stop to it completely. There's no reason why the cricket stuff cannot be processed through a park district uh, employee. Um, Mr. Coker, I did notice a couple um, trustees shaking their head when you initially spoke. I think that was very disrespectful. So I just wanted to let you know my observation of what that uh, particular time. So I thank you all for your time. I yield the rest of my five minutes. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bari, did you raise your hand? No, no, it's stretching like that. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> I will come back here. Good Excuse evening. Excuse me, could I ask you to take your mask off when you speak so we could thank okay. you? <laughs> Good evening, uh, respected uh, mayor and the board of trustees. My name is Azhar Khan. I live in Glenel Heights, 271 Shorewood Drive, apartment 2A, for the last uh, seven and a half years. And this is my second in-person appearance in front of the board members in the last seven years because I had a good trust on the trustees and I voted during the elections and I really trust all trustees to take all like decision whatever is best for the village. But for the last two weeks and on, what I have been hearing from social medias and calls and everything, then I have a shaky trust over here. So that's why I just come to present my only some basic points. On Thursday, I what I observed there was a discussion about who we have to go for the bid. We understand that there is no process. There's a failure. We should have a process in village for the bidding process internally, but that has to be the exclusive for Glendale Heights village. Because every village, in my opinion, has some exclusiveness into that one. That attracts the other people to live in the village. And why I bought the per, uh, my house in this village, just because of the camera park. It, it is the attraction of this village. We should not sell this attraction, to be honest. Maybe in future, in five years, I can build my own company and compete with, with ACC in a, in a cricket. But if the outsiders come, they have a more business kind, they, have a, they are rich than, richer than me, then I won't have any privilege being resident of the Glendale Heights. One more point, what I observed, my sister used to live in Glendale Heights. My niece needs to go to Churchill, District 41. Since she moved out from the village to West Chicago, she has to take her daughter out from district as well. Because district has a policy that if you're not living in the village, that you are not eligible for your daughter and son to get admitted into the uh, school system. So in my opinion, Though how much ACC pays and everything, that should uh, I leave as a resident to the trustees, definitely. But there has to be the process, bidding system, but only for the residents of the Glendale Heights. There has to be a competition within the Glendale Heights for the improvement purpose, but the outsider, we should not put anything on sale that is on exclusive to Glendale Heights. That's my only fear. That's why I'm here after seven years. So I rest my trust on the trustees, respectable. And the last point, what I observed on last Thursday, two, two trustees, including Mayor, Mr. Siddiqui and Mr. Coker, they, they, were in, they were pointed out personally by maybe from Coker's daughter to Siddiqui Saab and some other people to Coker. So during the voting system, during the trustees, they should not be eligible to vote. So the other trustees should take decision and then come up with any process. That's my point. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Please, if somebody. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Cheryl Fron, Fullerton Avenue, Glendale Heights. Um, I came across the proposal that you had in the Daily Journal that says that all requests of the proposal document must be received to 11 a.m. on December 1st in the finance department, and the request must be sealed. Now, you took a check and a contract from them, 
And rumor has it, you already cashed that check. So my question is, why is this out here? If you've already made the deal, why are we even here? Thank you. Ma'am, uh, I did not me. I have not cashed check, number one. Number two, I have not made any deal. Deal is subject to approval of six trustee. Yeah, but you weren't supposed to even accept or look at a contract. It says here it was supposed to be given sealed to the finance department. Ma'am, for last 20 years, this is a tradition that this deal is going on with one person. And deal was $12,000 per year. What I have received is $29,000. Okay. That the, is the best interest of my resident. I thank you. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Ma'am, ma ma clear up your thing, uh, your, your question. An RFP was never issued. The notice was given, but it was never followed through on. So there were no bids received because there were no requests for proposals. But he received a contract. But the, your question was whether there was a bid and why wasn't that followed. And what I'm saying is the request for proposals never went out. So that's the answer to your question. It was in the daily. That was the notice, correct. Anybody else? Uh, yes. My name is Arun Siddiqui. I've been living in USA for the last 40 years. I wasn't born in this country, but I came to choose to leave this country. And I love this country because of the freedom or because of the religious freedom. And I know Mr. Bari for the last 30 years. And someone, if somebody built the house, the empty land, and he built the house, make a wall, make a roof, make a windows, and for the last 20 years, he's doing this, all this hard work, and he should not be kicked out from that house. He should not be, she, she should be stay in this house, and you guys have to work out with him. He's a very lovely guy, and he's a very hardworking guy, and I know him very well. He's a very honest guy. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, welcome. Um, Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, taking this time to meet with us today. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak here. Um, my name is Shashanga Damanagu. I am a 19-year-old college sophomore from Naperville, Illinois. And just a little bit about my background. Um, I am the captain of the only youth-run cricket team in this whole entire Chicagoland area, whether it's Glendale Heights, Naperville, Bolingbrook, the whole entire Chicagoland area. Um, I've, on my team, we have people who are representing the USA Under-19 cricket team, the Midwest Under-19 cricket team, potentially going on to represent USA uh, senior men's team all across the country. So a little bit about that is that we actually have people who are going to be the future of Chicagoland cricket, not just uh, people who are 50 years old kind of getting to the end of their uh, career. Besides that, on an organizational standpoint, um, I'm also the youngest International Cricket Council ICC certified umpire in the, in the country. Uh, I'm also the youngest minor league cricket umpire as well. So I know a little bit about how cricket should be run, how, a little bit about how umpiring should go. So uh, when I speak, I speak from a place, a place of education a little bit. Um, I've known Mr. Sandeep Mehta for several, several years, and I've had the uh, pleasure to see the influence that he has on the cricket scene uh, directly in in the Chicagoland area, but as well as for the youth. Um, he's provided us uh, opportunities to kind of practice at the highest level, providing us with free uh, facilities and high state-of-the-art equipment. He actually has his own indoor facility that he's created for us um, to use free of charge. People have just come from practice there just now, and international players, uh, former international players, have actually come use his facilities as well. So I can say that he's a very respected individual who has a lot of say and a lot of pull in the cricket community in, um, in this country as well as in the Chicagoland area. Um, several of a the ATC players actually use Mr. Sandeep Mehta's facilities as well, so I'd like you to keep that in mind that the facilities that he's providing and the services that he's providing are used by Glendale Heights residents, but also residents over, over all of the Chicagoland area. And um, the ACC is run by people um, who live in Glendale Heights, but the majority of players that play in the ACC are not Glendale Heights residents. I'd like to make that very clear. Um, the majority of them are actually from other parts of Chicago. So the ACC does not exclusively serve just Glendale Heights residents, which I think is a very uh, key issue in this matter, because only Glendale Heights is not at stake here. It's the whole Chicagoland cricket community. Um, the current state of management in the Glendale Heights, resident, um, Glendale Heights cricket grounds uh, is poor at best. Um, as will be discussed in greater detail, 
the amount of money the league charges for people to actually play, for teams to come and take part in their um, tournament, is, and the amount of quality of cricket that is provided to them is a very mismatched uh, number. The quality of balls, the quality of equipment, the quality of the grass even cut at the grounds is uh, extremely low compared to the amount of money that the, the league charges for these people to use their facilities. Um, furthermore, the state of the umpiring in the ACC um, is very poor as well. Sometimes umpires don't even show up, and I think that speaks volumes about the league itself and the way it's run. I mean, coming from a seasoned umpire, I can say that the umpiring standards in the ACC is very poor, and I feel like that needs to be addressed as well, um, potentially to change of management. Someone mentioned in the last um, town hall meeting on Thursday that the ACC has been growing for several, several years and that it's becoming more popular. But I'd like to alter the um, alternate opinion that the reason the ACC has been growing is not due to the seller management team, but because of the interest of the community to play cricket. They have no other option in this country. There's very limited opportunities to play cricket. I think that they play more out of a necessity rather than being able to actually enjoy the fruits of uh, the money they're spending. And I feel like that could be uh, improved as well. The players, as I mentioned before, who play in the ACC, most of who are not, who are not from Gundal Heights um, are the ones that actually make the league run, not the management themselves. Uh, the consensus among the majority of the teams and the captains of the teams is that the ACC could be run at a much higher level uh, with better facilities, better equipment, uh, just better overall management, better umpiring as well. The adage that someone mentioned of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I feel like does not really apply to the situation because, in fact, the league has been broken for several years. Uh, and it is currently broken as well. I think with Mr. Sandeep Mehta's proposal, it has to be kept in mind what he would, could do for the state of Chicago Land cricket and Glendale Heights cricket. He could actually make it an epicenter of Chicago cricket with the kind of opportunities he will provide to Glendale Heights residents only, but also to women's cricket, like he mentioned, to youth cricket, like he mentioned, all over across the, the country. So I'd like to ha invite the board trustees members to seriously consider the proposal because the state of cricket in Glendale Heights is um, it could grow to a state that it could take over the whole Chicago land area and it could become the um, mecca of cricket in this country, if you will. And I'd like to really consider that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mayor, can we, uh, can, we, can we limit this to about five minutes? It was, per, it was, that was five. Yeah, it was? We had about 20 seconds left, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. who's timing there? Are you I'm, time, I'm, you I'm, timing that? Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Cool. Okay, uh, we have some, um, resident on phone or on Zoom, so please. Um, Ms. Nicole. Else? No one No one has emailed the uh, board email account outside of what Doug has already read, and no one has emailed or said anything in the chat within Zoom. Uh, Mr. Burry. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Sohel Burry. And I live here in Glendale Heights over four years now. Some people came here talking about under the table, shady business. I would request those people talking about shady under the table, please bring the proof, some evidence, and expose those people. And Mr. Attorney Peter Pesion, please advise your president. When you talk about Bari and his family running the business, it's not right in front of the camera, okay? No under the table thing, unless you have some proof. If we charge less money, we were doing a lot of welfare work. We were charging team less. People talking about $2,600, bring me the check or bring me the quick pay that you paid $2,600. Okay, so people lying about here without any proof. So that's all the facts you need to see. And as as far as the agenda goes with the ACC and Village of Glendale Heights, so we are ready to negotiate whatever they ask. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Uh, there was uh, one guy from this side. Yes. Next is Mr. Mehta. Hi, I'm uh, Fuzzle Hawk. I'm uh, the uh, Vice President of Actual Midwest Cricket Conference that has been out there for 50 plus years. And uh, my question to the board is, how would you go about establishing, you know, when you consider others, 
how would you go about establishing credibility? Like, how, do you, how much do you know about cricket to say this is the right person? Because you've seen and heard a lot of claims people had that they are USA, they are this and that. We are a nonprofit. We've been operating 50 years. Everybody is welcome to come, donate, join. We work with Skokie Park District, Hanover Park, Chicago. We have four fields right by University of Chicago. So, um, so how would be the board establish credibility of other organizations that will be part of this, given your qualification, your knowledge about cricket? How would you ensure the next person or whatever who are you want to engage with will deliver quality results? And then, uh, and and that's that's all. Uh, you know, I'm interested to hear more today rather than speak to this. And uh, again, as I, as a as a Vice President for running the oldest league in Chicago. If the board ever needs advice, I'm happy to help you guys out. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mehta, I believe you, you raised hand. Okay, he was, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm about to hand something out to everyone, so. Please, uh, your name and your address. Sure, yeah, uh, my name is Samir. I'm from Wien, Illinois, and I have some handouts for everyone. If okay, you could sure, take a look. sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, who needs one? You can take this one. You're fine. Whoever needs one. No. Does everyone have a copy? Everyone's good, everyone has a copy? Perfect, so as far as the initial idea, I've been playing cricket in Chicago since I was five years old, so I'm pretty familiar with the scene. Uh, I'm gonna be an investment banker, I'm already M1, I'm certified in financial valuation and looking at companies' financials and really analyzing what makes a company profitable. So I did some research into the cost that all captains said they paid for ACC as to what revenue they bring in and really compared that to the cost that they have. So. The fact that he said most company, most teams don't pay $2,500 to play is totally false. That's the fees every single team pays to enter. I have check stubs right here paid by one team called Midwest CC, which they pay $2,500 to join. And I'm pretty sure if you look at any other team in the league, they do exactly the same thing. And that's just the cost to play. And we all love the sport, and that's totally fine. So if you, turn, if you flip right here to the first page and you look, there are 42 teams in the league, as they stated on Thursday. They each pay $2,500. That's straight revenue, a top line, of around $105,000 right there. You go a little bit further, there are costs that were talked about earlier that you pay to add players to your roster if you're past the deadline. If you don't want to provide umpires, you pay $200. So I assume, let's say only one third of the teams don't provide umpires, which is not true. In reality, two thirds, mostly all the teams don't want to provide their own umpires. It's something the leagues are expected to provide. I have a question, you know, you mentioned $2,500. Yeah. Is it for one month or for one year or? Yeah, so that $2,500 is the fee you pay to play every season per team. How so long is that season? Uh, three months. Okay. Yeah, so basically all the revenue generated by this company or ACC, five months, is generated within five months. So if we're looking at this revenue, let's go down. We add some miscellaneous costs and some revenue that they get through other fees they charge companies for, they charge the teams for not having the players and adding players late or other things like the umpire penalty cost, they call it. Let's say they get a simple profit, a revenue there on 3850 just assuming some basic assumptions that are outlined below. Let's go into the cost for the regular season. The base, biggest expenses any management team is going to have are the management fees you pay for the companies themselves, the umpires, and the balls. I think anyone here can agree with that, right? Don't just go ahead. Just don't look at it. Sure. So looking at their PP&E, which, the, which is the federal SBA loan that ACC took out in 2020, they said they got $7,500 in that PPP loan, which is the SBA loans that they gave out during COVID hardship times, which are based on the tax returns filed by the ACC in 2020. Using the PPP formula, that means their monthly income, their monthly salary that they pay out is $3,000. Simple PPP formula, the government used it to hand out money to companies at times in which people would have to pay in order to make sure they don't lay any employees off. That means if you look at their annual salary that they're paying, that's $36,000. <coughs> Once you go past the $36,000, 
the biggest fee the company the ACC remaining board has left is the ground management fee, which is $2,000 paid to the park district every year, balls and umpires. I calculated the cost of balls and the cost of umpires by looking at the amount of games that are played, the amount of umpires that are used per game, which is one in regular season and two in postseason, and then looking at the two balls that are used in each match. Com when, com when combining that with the number of teams that play and the number of games that are played a season, their overall costs will come out to be, if we add it up, their overall costs in the end lead to a net profit of $58,040. And this is just looking at after paying the fees based on the amount of money they reported they paid to the government in salaries, balls, umpires, ground maintenance, electricity that they pay for the night tournaments that they run. So if you consider that, the idea is someone who went to school at Glombard East, which everyone knows has a lot of kids from Glendale Heights, the fact that I played at Camera Park, went to Oktoberfest there, played cricket there growing up, that $60,000 that could be used to make my friends' lives, parks, all, of the, all everyone's lives in the area much better, and this is a very conservative estimate because I marked up prices on everything because as you do an evaluation, you always find a range of values that can be caught. So $60,000 profit is the bottom line, the least amount that could be made in this situation, charging teams $2,500. They can claim that they pay people more in salaries, but I'm looking at their taxes and what they stated they paid. So if you look at this, there's a lot more opportunity as to how much more money that could be invested into the community if we have someone else come in and run these grounds because there's just so much more money being made that is not there, that should be there for the community itself. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Let me respond to you. He told me to go there. Before you go, uh, can I, uh, Keith? Excuse can me. I, no, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, let me say I'm my name first. Of this mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. so, please. I yes. have a question Present. to Keith. No, no. Yes. Uh, please. Uh, yes. Okay. It's my turn to speak right now. I know. Please. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chris, Chris, wait, wait a second. Let him speak. And you can, under Open Meetings Act, we may not prohibit anyone from taping this. You can look it up. I need those boards. He said you could not approach. You had to keep a distance to tape. That is covered under the Illinois Open Meetings Act. Yes, Mr. Mehta. Yeah, my name is Sandeep Mehta. I'm from Wheaton, Illinois. And unfortunately, I've been labeled as an outsider. But from the previous years, I've been seeing what has happened to the Glendale Heights Village and what has happened to the revenue that's been coming in from this, uh, go ahead. Just to give you an example, that all the money that Samir just said that the ACC makes, they can't even reinvest in these pitches where the youth play? And you think this is a professional organization? Please go to. Yeah, I'm sorry. So this is what a youth practice pitch should look like. And this is Glendale Heights number one ground condition of the pitches. So he's been doing it for 20 years. That doesn't make it right. So <clears throat> Mr. Chester Pojak asked me last time. Mr. Bari, you are not supposed to whisper you know, over here. Don't, don't talk. Don't talk like that, you know. I can hear you from here. And if, OK, please take this guy out. What? Yes, take this guy, chief. Take this guy out. Take both guys uh, out. Hold on. No. no. Mayor? Mayor? Listen. Wait, Mayor, Mayor. We'll, we'll all we'll walk out, George. We'll all walk out. Go. Okay. You go ahead. You. Goodbye. Yes. Oh, excuse go me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Right here. Please. I'm, I'm taking care. Right. I'm taking care. I know how to I take it. I told it. Okay. Hey. Yes. yes. And a board member. Just leave. A resignation letter. Sir, so just leave. He goes on a Facebook. He goes on a Facebook. Apologize. We've been quiet for the whole time. Have not disrupt hey, nobody. We're good. Please, we're good. Please, please move these people out. Okay. Uh, okay. I may, may. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. No, I don't. I don't want disturbance. People are coming over hold here. Hold on, hold on for a second. Is a mob. People hold on mob for a second. Yes. They can. They they can come back and speak. Okay. 
The yeah. residents, okay. the residents have a right to come back yeah. and speak. Okay. I mean, we, I'm not going to throw residents out, yeah. out, out of the board meeting. I'm not going to do that. Mr. Christie, I, mean, I don't like the service, you know. Okay. Yes. Okay, they it have is. to come back. Yeah, they can come back for five okay. minutes. But if they speak, then forever, I mean, today, they cannot come back again. For but today's goal, minutes, yes. today's goal is to voice, get a voice for the village of Glendale Heights residents. None of the money that has been made by American Cricket Council has been reinvested in the community. Not only that, it has costed over a quarter million dollars to the village over the over last five years by putting the lights on, doing a lot of construction and maintenance to the, to the village grounds by the village of Glendale Heights. And with no return on investment at all for the village. Why? Why is that? I'm asking you all of... Mr. Pat, that's a simple question to all the trustees. Why is that not a concern? I'm an outsider. I thought I could do something good. Mr. Khan approached me. They, he did not like the state of the cricket affairs in this, in this city. So he extended to me, came up and said, Sandeep, could you help me out? And I said, I would love to help you out. I personally don't need to do this. There's no personal or financial gain to me. I'm a pretty successful businessman. I, I don't like, I come from humility, but I will today say this because I've been attacked repeatedly that our corporation does over 20 million in revenue and I have 80 employees working for me. Trust me, I do not need to do this. But I think I can do something good for the village. I can build something good. I can bring international players to the, to the, to the state, I mean to your city. I can build a youth program better than this. This is my youth program and I have the youth supporting me. And every resident in Village of, Glen in Village of Glendale Heights can come to my facility under 21 and play free. And I do not want to just raise money for the cricket side of it. I also want to explore with Doug, with the Village Administrator, how can we do other programs? How could we make a positive impact in other sports? Cricket is not the only, only, only goal here. <laughs> the goal is to have a positive impact on our youth in our society. So we build future better citizens. That's the reason for doing this. And I've been labeled as an outsider. I live in Beaton. I drive through Glendale Heights 10 times a day. And yes, my name is Sandeep Mehta. Please make an effort to pronounce my name because I'm not going to go away that easily. I want to bring business to Glendale Heights. And here's, here's something thing that I'm going to hand out to you. Thank you. Thanks. I'll give it away. Thank you. Mr. Matt, just so you know, I'm going to add about a minute and a half to your time for the disturbance. Thank you. Uh, so American, American Cricket Council is supposed to be slated as a nonprofit organization. So their books and records should be transparent and open. I will offer full transparency to the village of the revenues coming in, going out, and what we can do with that difference, how we can reinvest in the village. In addition to, there was a gentleman over here, I have no problem if the ground goes to the park district and it gets rented out there. But the way you are doing it right now, it's a big disservice to the citizens of Glendale Heights. You, pay, you, have, you have invested a lot of money and some other corporation is making money on your investment, which is not fair to the residents. Only few handful of residents are benefited with this arrangement. So look at your arrangement. And it was very misfortune for me that you chaired that meeting being his brother-in-law. That was my misfortune yesterday. But that's what it, it is what it is. Mr. Siddiqui, keep your, your turn. I didn't coming. say a word. Okay, first of all, I didn't say a word. What do you mean by Mr. Siddiqui? Okay. Did keep I say a word? Keep calm. Why you are targeting me? Because, Did I say a word? Because you were impartial. That's why. Okay, Mr. Peter, Stop. I'm going to leave it to you. Stop. Stop, please. Time is up. Yes. Thank I have a question. You are Mr. taking Peter. his time. Go ahead. No, I'll answer next, his question. Next. No, no, I'll answer his question. Yes. That's okay. Can you bring your board, that thing, that the pitch you are? Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like the one? Yeah. Yes. Bring one. <laughs> so let's, let's compare apple to apple. Why you are, you know, you are showing Mr. Body's field outside. The one which you have is indoor, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I think my voice is loud enough. 
So, this is a mat in the half. Even in the outdoor, this mat and this mat is... No, no, no. I, my question is, we have to compare apple to apples, correct? It is apples. So, let me finish. Let me and finish. just be respectful, I'm, okay? I'm going to be as respectful as I can be. Yes, respectful. okay. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. So, the... I, I play cricket quite a bit. I spend a lot of time with this, so here is it. These, the matting that goes indoor is the same matting that's going to go here. The net that you see on each side would be the same net that goes here. There's no, we don't use a different material. My point to these is that after 20 years of being in the community, is this the best you can do? And Glendale Heights is going to accept that for its residents. After investing, I don't know how, over $250,000. This is what you want for your citizens? That's all I want to ask. Thank you very much. I think your time away. is up. Yeah, well, sir, yes, thank you. your time is okay, done. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are set. you are coming for second. Can you are you coming for second? Okay, any other body? This. Any other person? Is there anybody who has not spoken who would like to speak? Give them a chance to come in. Who? Yes. Who? I think they're coming back in. Okay. Yeah. If you want to, oh, I don't know. Just can everybody have a seat first, and then so just so it's orderly, we don't have too many people walking around. I got my seat. I'm all right. It's okay. I got it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys. Um, quick question. I thought we were here for Sir, could Village you state of... your name and address, please? Thank sure. you. Sure. Ari Fokla, 1768 Arlington Lane, Glendale Heights, Illinois, 60139. Only question is, I thought we were here between Village of Glendale Heights and American Cricket Conference. Um, there was supposed to be a discussion between those two parties, but now we're hearing all the other people up here going about financial and all this stuff which nobody knows exactly what they are talking about. There is a cost to everything we all know. But I am just fail to understand why we've been talking about outsider right now when we already voted on Thursday, I guess, for 4-0, I believe. And why are we bringing that back in the village? Why are we talking about it? I mean, pure and simple. Why are we talking about it? And who's doing this? Because apparently, it was done and dusted on Thursday. 4 0 wood. I think our trustees, our board, have some respect. They made that decision for a reason. Why are we talking about other leagues right now? When there were clearly stats right here, the Village of Glendale Heights and American Cricket Conference, that should be the discussion we should be talking about right now. That what we want to do, or what we want to come up with, or how we want to work it out. But I believe you're still considering somebody when clearly it was 4-0. The word was done by our board members, respective board members. So I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Ne Next. Uh, yes, Red. Yes, please. My <laughs> name is Adil Salam. 1174, Harbor Court is the address for, God knows, nine years now. Um, he just showed some pictures. Can I have those posters back here, please, for the no, board members? No, no, you talk yourself. No, no, you know. that's why I want to talk about, because oh, no, that's you, misleading oh, no, information. Just, give, just so, talk, you know. Uh, Don't, so what, what you are trying to do here is just, you are trying to play smart. You're not that smart. You know I that. Know. I know that. Listen, you you, don't you, talk. You're a dumb man. Huh? We all know that. You know, listen, I tell you. You, no, 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 you don't need to tell me it's listen, my time to speak. You are here. Can, you are, the, sir, can you, the attorney please tell him it's my time to speak? And you keep your mouth shut when the public is speaking. It's the public's village, not your daddy's home. Now you needed that, so you got that. So now the agenda was negotiate a contract between American Cricket Conference and the village of Glendale Heights. What the f have we been doing for the last half hour? You are chairing this meeting. What are we doing for the last half hour? You first alleged, alleged, alleged for two weeks 
then you made some third person call uh, to Mr. Siddiqui to try to talk to you and Mr. Siddiqui to sort things out, which he turned down respectfully. He can present um, the call light, the call numbers and stuff. When that did not happen, you brought these guys back. We had an in-camera session for over two and a half hours on Thursday. We did all of this Thursday, all of this You are doing this again? I told you I'm going to serve you with a legal notice. Wait for it on next Monday. You will get one. With that being said, as a resident of Glendale Heights, as a Muslim, and a community member representing Muslim faith. I, sir, demand that you step down from the seat of the president of the Glendale Heights. You religiously profiled us. The chief police can vouch for that. That's in camera. You apologized. Probably your daughter wrote it down for you. You apologized about it saying that you said those words because of Mr. Bari. I guess when you take a shit, that's because of Mr. Bari. When you're eating, that's because of Mr. Bari. When you're driving, that's because of Mr. Bari, because your life is full of Mr. Bari right now these days. Peter. Sir, if, if Peter. you're going to address the cricket issue, can continue. If you're going to just berate people up here, then it's time for you to sit down. Okay. okay I'll, I'll speak on the cricket issue. So with that being said and done, um, it already went on air, so it's going to get viral like last two weeks. So um, what I was about to say, the pictures they presented, which I saw, the carpet which was torn that's on the practice matting, which is on beyond the ground, which nobody used. We don't even use it. You want to give it to them? Please feel free. Give it to them. We don't use it. You cannot play a match there. You cannot do anything besides practicing for an hour or two. That being said, you are discussing the costs and the character of a person, not a league. This was between a league and the village. My question to the village trustees is, are we character assassination, are we doing character assassination of an individual and entertaining outsiders, which he does not like, the guy in the black suit. Um, he does not like that, um, being called him as an outsider. Again, sir, if you're going to address the cricket, that's, please that's address the That's the cricket, cricket issue, because he's an outsider addressing a cricket field. That's you're, my issue. You're attacking people. At this point, if you have nothing regarding cricket itself in Glendale Heights, then you're talking Okay, so my question is, when you're, character when you're doing a character assassination of a person and entertaining other person's proposal, was entertaining a proposal, or even entertaining other leagues, uh, proposal in the agenda, if uh, the administrator can answer that, please. What was the question? V what, the <laughs> agenda, did it says that you will entertain another league's proposal here today. The agenda from last week reads, discussion of terms of user agreement for three cricket fields at Camera Park between the Village of Glendale Heights and the American Cricket Fields. Mm, Mr. Akbal Khan and Mr. Sandeep Mehta does not own ACC. They do not represent ACC. They do not represent American Cricket Conference. My question to the Board of Trustees is, and I'm leaving, this is my last question. What are we doing entertaining these folks again? I don't need your answer. I need the answer from the Board of Trustees. What, what, what are we doing with these guys again? Can the Board of Trustees address this? Because I don't want, want his answer. Because again, as he alleged, that now I'm alleging, He's dealing under the table with this guy. And Again, we all sir, your know time is over. Uh, so please, uh, no, Chief, so, Chief, please remove this guy. Remove, remove this guy. Just, just as a reminder, <coughs> remove this guy and give him five minutes more, ten, ten minutes. No, man. First we was. <laughs> just a reminder, we're, we're, this is not an answer question session, so please state your comments and we'll move forward. And if there's anybody else who has not spoken yet. Well, I have to... Yes, please. <laughs> After Thursday, when we take... Sir, sir this, is, this is inappropriate. Yeah, right. What are you, what are you doing? You can't. Yes, sir. Go, go sit down. <laughs> So anybody who has, anybody who has not spoken before. Mr. Attorney, can I explain what 
Mr. Parry, just hold on. We're just it's it's comments. It's not explaining. If there's anybody who has not spoken yet, this is yes, your opportunity. To yes, ma'am. I'd like to. My name is Kim Darlin. I live in Greenbrier subdivision. I live in Glendale Heights. Take your mask Would you off, remove please? your mask, please? Thank you. And again, I don't give a <laughs> about cricket. However. I'm at a loss for, I'm at a loss for how many dollars did the village of Glendale Heights truly pay for those fields? That's the question. Did Glendale Heights pay, I heard 2,500 or 25, I heard an amount that was astronomical. Did Glendale Heights pay that amount for those cricket fields? That's the question. Mr. Maritato. <laughs> Again, ma'am, ma'am, if I could, this is not a this is not a question. If you want period. to answer, okay, I'll give question, it to you. Right? After the if you want to make comments, comments you're free to, to make comments. So, okay. Just to clarify, I'm gonna make a little small presentation about the history kind of the cricket field well, involving the village. That, that was that was the plan we were supposed to do tonight. Yeah. I don't know okay. how all this happened. I really don't. Because the last meeting, it didn't it wasn't supposed to be like this. So I have no idea what is going on. I really don't. So and I think the rest of the board members up here don't know what's going on. Once I we, thought we were only supposed to vote on the ACC. Yeah. Once, we, guys, once we get past the, the, the public comments, there will be a presentation regarding the topic that's on, on, on the agenda. Okay. okay. And then, you, okay. then individually, each elected official will have time to discuss the terms and conditions of a contract or do whatever it is you want to talk about. Okay, that's fine. Mary. So yeah, it's we fine. just have to get it's through, through the public just, comment portion. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, so then will my question be answered at all or it's just yes. a this, comment? In, if you, shortly. If you listen okay. to the presentation, correct. Thank you. Anybody else from public who has not spoken before? And we're not, we're not going to go through the whole thing. Yeah. Not, is there anyone on Zoom who wishes to speak? If you do, please address it in the comments or in the chat. Okay, so Acting Village Administrator Doug Flint has prepared a presentation. Please proceed with your presentation. Are the public comments closed? We're going to close the public, public comments. comments Everybody closed. who's spoken has had a chance to speak. Okay. So I was asked uh, to put together a small presentation on kind of the history of the cricket field since it's been around for a long time and many of us don't know that much about it and many of us probably forgotten a lot about it since it's been around for since 2000, 2001. So this is just a very brief overview. I'm actually going to skip a couple slides in here. It's only seven slides anyway, but much of what is in here has already been talked about tonight by others and probably did it better than I'm going to do it because I actually have history on it and I'm just kind of going off what people have told me has happened for the last 15, 20 years. So uh, from American Cricket Associate Conference's website and from the literature that was handed out at the last board meeting, uh, Glendale Heights Cricket Field established in 2001, cooperation between the Village and American Cricket Conference starting with two teams. Uh, today, according to the website, they have 36 teams and 500 players. Uh, they use 11 different fields. There's fields listed on their website. Uh, they use all three fields. Uh, I have a schedule. All three fields are being used throughout the year, fields one, two, and three. Uh, in August of 2018, American Cricket Conference paid $7,250 for one of the pitches of carpeting. In September of 2020, they paid another uh, 9650 for another pitch, and they pay yearly for returfing field two. I assume that's the cricket pitch for field two. So every year they returf uh, field two. I assume that expense is somewhere between 7250 and 9650. No. My understanding is they put a different type of material down, so it's okay. not the same as the high speed that the other two are. Okay. But they return field two yearly. 
uh, <clears throat> from as far as revenues go, uh, American Creek Conference was an affiliate with the, with the village back in the early 2000s and paid a, uh, as a, an affiliate, we treated them like a softball league or that kind of recreational type league. They paid a $25 fee for every non-resident playing similar to what you would do in a softball league, right? And then a regular fee for those. Sorry, dude. It's a, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> in 2011, went away from the affiliate status and went to an annual contract. One record was located in 2011 showing a rental of $1,000 for the two upper fields and three batting stations. Field three was not yet built. It was still a baseball field. Uh, revenues that, uh, most recent revenues that we have uh, easy access to find today. Uh, 2017 was $2,500 for fees, 2018, $5,000 for fees and $2,000 for site improvement fee. 2019, $10,000 for fees and $2,000 site improvement fee. 2020, $5,000 and $2,000. And 2021, $10,000 for fees and $2,000 for site improvement fee. Uh, what does it cost the village to maintain the fields when it comes to maintenance of cutting the grass? Because it's really a, kind of what we do. Re reseed, throw down fertilizer, maintain the fields, that kind of stuff. And I will remind everybody that for about six to seven months out of the year, those fields are used every day. And there really isn't time for the fields to repair themselves and regrow because they're used every day, right? Even if you look at Wrigley Field really close, it looks pretty in pictures. <laughs> but when you get down there, it's it still got some issues, right? So it costs us about $10,000 a year in employee costs, mowing, uh, seeding, uh, everything that goes into just kind of maintaining the fields. The fields get cut as the park gets cut. Uh, in 2018, in response to the growing interest in cricket, the village removed the main camera park baseball and softball field and installed a third cricket field. That cost for construction, field design, architecture fees was $220,062.50. That answer your question, Kim? That answers it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. So that is the cost that we the village put in to install Cricket Field 3. So that's kind of the overview of how much it costs us to do cricket, the revenues, and kind of really broad picture of the history of it. Um, so take it for what it's worth. If you have questions, somebody here, an executive staff, could probably answer them. If not, I'll sit down. Thank you, Mr. Flint. Okay, now I, sure. I will read now a few points, you know. Talking points for Mayor, November 22nd, 2021. Number one, based on the last board meeting, the value of the fields has been established at $29,000. Subleasing will be prohibited. Number two, open field times will be scheduled by Village Park and Recreation Department. Village will get money. Number three, Village will work out the terms and condition for renting. Number four, new conditions of contract will be negotiated by the Village. Number five, Improvement to the village contract of the fields, terms and conditions is required and needs to be established by the village. Number six, improvement of fields or grounds shall be controlled by and maintained by the village, but the cost should be paid by the league. Number seven, children, women, and seniors deserve equal opportunity and access established and trained by these league teams. Number eight, if we cannot agree on the contract, new cricket request for proposal RFP is required. 
Mr. Mayor, can we have a copy yes. of that? Yes. One through eight, your, what you're reading, so we can review it? Yes. Should I call these people? Yeah, call each one. So, okay. Mayor, now you're going to just call on each, each elected okay. official? So we're going to open question. up to each trustee? Yeah, now I'm calling, uh, okay. I'm requesting each uh, uh, trustee to speak, Mr. Schmidt. It's your turn now, you know. Mr. Bill Smith. It looks like we should be realizing more revenue from the cricket fields, but as has been said, priority should be given to our residents. Um, I do feel that uh, a youth league would be a benefit. A women's league would be a benefit. Um, I think we should be able to negotiate with uh, uh, Mr. Bari and his uh, organization to provide for that. One question that I have is there has been allegedly a contract, an agreement signed by Mayor Coker with another party and a check accepted. Number one, where is that agreement? And number two, where is the check? That's all I have. I, I can answer, I don't know, I have anything, I have never seen the agreement. I can tell you that the check was presented to the finance department. Uh, we, as a rule, for a lot of reasons, don't hold checks <laughs> for fear of losing checks. Uh, the check was deposited. It's in an escrow account because we're not exactly sure what's going to happen with that check. So we just put it into an escrow account so that it can, if, if it's deemed to be returned, it gets returned. But we, as a rule, do not hold checks uh, for any length of time uh, because ten checks tend to disappear and then we don't have them. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Trustee Light, please. Oh, my turn. All right. What about um, my turn? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. You go. No, are you, are you, you coming back? No. Say best for last. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure everyone knows that we are talking about a publicly owned field and that we're renting time. This has been a big battle about uh, the fields and what they're doing and what we have and what we don't have. And it's, it's a publicly owned field. It is like a baseball field, you know. Most of the residents don't even know we have cricket. That's the most upsetting part. I mean, me, I don't understand the game. I still don't. I've watched it several times. Um, I wish I could, you know, make more people understand what you're looking for, but this is still a public ground. Uh, it's a battle over something that everybody in the village does own. And I have, to, I have to represent my village and its best interest all the way around. Um, negotiations, yes, they must take place. Uh, increased fees, yes, must happen. Um, even down to the the maintenance fee, I need explanations on, you know, what the ten thousand goes to and what the two thousand was going to, and what we're doing with it. We have parking lots that need, you know, assistance in the area. We have large tournaments that that take place. That I noticed parking being attended by uh, uh, different groups. Maybe youth groups could take advantage of that and work with the, uh, the Cricket Association, parking cars, collecting fees for, for their youth group, you know, and actually bring more in and maybe even, you know, offer the free classes to those youth groups that are helping with parking. Uh, we have um, a lot of leagues. I mean, I, I can't believe how many cricket fields there are around the area. And I'm not, I'm, I love to see everyone play, you know, together. I would love to see that eventually. You know, you got the Sox, you got the Cubs. I'm a Cubs fan, so sorry. Um, everyone play together, be able to have different teams from different leagues, have a, a like more or less a DuPage County or a Northern Illinois World Series type of thing go on. I think that'd be great. Um, I do know I would like to keep 
everything open to like a one year per se contract, you know, be able to, to keep it changed every year or at least open for negotiation, maybe raise the fees each and every year. Um, definitely having the books open to the village and having maybe the village uh, handling scheduling. And maybe we can open up something eventually and get more teams playing. But that's really all I got. A lot of questions, too. Are you done, Mr. Light? Trustee Light, are you done? Oh, I'm good. OK. Thanks. Uh, Trustee Siddiqui, please. OK, I just want to explain what cricket is, as my fellow trustees say that, you know, what cricket? Cricket is not just only a. Can I ask not interruption? Be <coughs> civilized, I believe. We already agreed on that, correct? Mm -hmm. I think it was nobody, I think nobody it was from public, no question. You are done, home. and now it's yeah. trust board's job. Okay. You know, is is their time? Yeah. So please don't so, interrupt. So what is cricket? It's not just a game. It's a family gathering. It's 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 a kind of occasion which every residence of Glendale Heights is waiting in summer. The elderly comes over there at the ground to meet. The women and children comes over there. The children comes and play while their brother or their father are playing. They are having their time. So I also this past week. It's been a kind of a, like a really stressful for me and for my family Thank because you. I've been dragged into this mess. I've been calling that I am biased or I'm partially inclined towards Mr. Bari, which is not true. And that's why in my last uh, board meeting, I put myself as absent. I didn't vote because it's a conflict of interest and I should be doing that and you know I am doing that but before even I go further I want to express and I want to tell my fellow board members what is the importance of cricket in a normal residence of Glendale Heights is I met a guy which whom I am not going to name because he told me not to and he said Mr. Siddiqui can you please relay my message to the board and the public. He has a son who was going to the high school and got into the drugs. And when this cricket started and he showed his son about the cricket, he eventually starts taking interest. And he met Mr. Bari, and I'm gonna blow cover Mr. Bari because he told me, and I think this is the time, so I'm going to say about this, Mr. Bari helped that children, because he is from the poor family, and Mr. Bari helped with the kid and all that. And that son, that son of uh, that guy, <coughs> get rid of this drug habit and start playing cricket. So cricket is not just a game. It's a basically a healthy activity which we are providing. And let me also tell you, in this ground, Pakistani cricket players come and they played. Indian cricket players had come and played. West Indian cricket players had come and played. And Mr. Bari represent all America in, in Paris, I believe, in one of his uh, uh, presentation. He represent uh, US while went to the. So there are numerous contribution by Mr. Bari. So we have to take that in account as well. It's not, we are not running here a corporate or a, or a profit business. We are here for the people. And we always have to keep the interest of the people first. We do not want any non-resident to take over our credit field. We don't want, as it has been saying, under table thing or whatever it's there. It's all transparent because the board just following the Parks and Recreation Committee's recommendation. That's what we did. We just followed the Parks and Recreation Committee's recommendation. We, we discussed that, and now we are here. That's all I have to say. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Welcome. Well, first of all, this all started out like a circus for number one. Number two, there were some mistakes made that we, we had, that we have to correct. First of all, we have to give that check back because the board knows nothing about anything that went on. <laughs> number three, number three is the park department cannot take over the cricket. We don't have maintenance, and we know nothing about cricket. So that's that's number three. Number four is that this is great. Would this all be would all would this all be by recommendation by the board? I mean, that's everything... what's up for discussion now, Pat. Is what? Oh, what, okay. What I would I would I would like I would like if if there's a lot of good things on this. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on it. So. You did do that good, Mayor. Thank you, sir. But uh, I would like this. Any anything that anything that is going on with cricket or any other activities in the village, right. I I want it to go to the village board so the village board approves it. Great. So that way the board knows exactly exactly what's going on, and we ain't walking in here blind. <laughs> and number three, we definitely got to negotiate. More money, uh, maybe more money at tournament time at the end of the year when we have tournaments. I mean that. I mean that key will probably. I don't know. It's up to the board. Whatever they, they decide. But I mean, if it was up to me, I mean more money. Maybe tournament time, you pay more money. I, I don't know. How, I don't know what the system is now. How they do it. But I mean, you you know a little more than I do about it. So, and that's my take. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Um, Darcy Pojok, please. I enjoy the cricket tournaments. I enjoy meeting all the, the, the teams that are over there. I really, really, truly enjoy passing out the trophies. Shaking hands with all the guys that play, winners and losers, both, and the entire families. But what disturbs me a lot is why this check and the contract was accepted by us, by you, and we were not notified one bit, and I've told you a couple times, the trustees run this village. I trust you, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. No, just take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Give some, some water. I need a shot and a beer. Give <laughs> some water. Let's go. I don't need it. Sit down. Sit down. You're blocking people's view. You're All right, that's it for that, me. That's, that's it. That's it. That's I don't want to. I, I can say more, but I'm I got I got to turn him off. <laughs> no. I'll catch you later, Pat. <laughs> uh, Are you done, sir? Yeah, I'm okay. done, yes. Um, Trustee Schroeder. All right. First of all, let me just say this. I am the oldest trustee on this board, not only age-wise, but time-wise. Sue Hale has been with us from day one. He started in 2001, and so did I. When no one else was interested in that cricket field, he took it upon himself he put lights in there. He took care of the grounds. Uh, he supported the village. Uh, and I feel that we owe something to this gentleman for all the things that he's done for us. <laughs> I'm not saying that somebody else wouldn't come in and do better, but they're coming into an established field while Sue Hale took it over when it was a nothing. And that's why I, I have respect for this gentleman, because he's doing it. I, I know that the other, t you know, the other organizations would like to come in, but it's just like owning a business. He really sort of owns that field. Maybe my thinking is wrong, but I do feel like when we had nothing, he was there for us. And, and I feel like that deserves some loyalty. And this is this is why I, I I feel the way that I do. 
I know the mayor is concerned about all of our citizens, but we, we're all concerned about them, and I don't think Sue Hale is hurting us in any way. So why should we bring a stranger in when he's doing so well? I don't have to applaud from you, Sue Hale. I speak from my heart. I really mean this. When, whenever we ran a campaign, and you'll do the same thing when this mayor runs a campaign, you've always helped us. You've helped all of us. And, and I don't think our residents are lacking anything because you are running that field. Uh, we have so many things that so many other villages don't have, and I attribute that to, to the way this village has been run. Our, our children are well taken care of. Our seniors have the best senior center imaginable. Uh, we give food to the poor. We do everything. So when you're talking about our, our residents, our residents don't lack anything. We're always fighting for them. And uh, um, right now, we're fighting for Sue Hale, who is a resident. So, and like Chester, I really enjoy the crickets, and I, I really love giving the trophies out. Sometimes I'm not always there, but Sue Hale, my heart is always with you guys because you do a good job. I wish I understood the game better. But, but you really, really have always been there for us, and, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Yes. I didn't have five minutes. Okay. You're going to have 10 minutes, sir. <laughs> you don't want me to have 10 minutes. Oh, oh I, I don't want him to have 10 minutes. minutes. <laughs> what I'd like to do, I'd like to keep uh, Mr. Barry in charge of the cricket field for the year 2022. Give him an opportunity. He's seen all the pros and cons that the opposition wants to get in. Maybe he can make some uh, sensible adjustments. Show us how worthy you are and your teams. And I think the trustees here on the board would approve that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So if I could, so it still seems like everybody's on the same track yeah. to renew this agreement. But the discussion here is what are those terms? That's what we're kind of here for is what are those terms of the agreement? I heard we want it one year from one person. But I guess we need more of a consensus of what we're looking for this agreement to be, if that's what the direction of the board is. We're not here to vote today. Uh, the point is for us to vet out what needs to be done so we could either bring you back an agreement with the ACC or proceed in the other direction that you direct us to go. Yes, Mr. Pett. Okay, what I'm, what I, what I'm, what I'm hearing is I could be wrong. Uh, a one-year contract, okay. renegotiate, the money has to be up for sure. Maybe money at the end of the year for tournaments, extra money. Okay. One-year deal, open for, for the money. We don't know how much yet, but we have to sit down and figure, yeah. Correct. figure that out. And, and, it's, and it's for one year. For a one year, no, it's a one year, no option. No auto renewal. No option. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, this is going to be a one year deal. At the, end of, at the end of next year, we'll see what happens. Yes. If we want to put, if we, want, if we decide that we want to put this out for bid, we'll do it the right way. Correct. And, and and we'll put it off for bed. Agree. When you are saying up means $29,000? Well, if, well if yeah, I, well, we had to sit okay. down. And, we have yeah, to, we are definitely if, if I can, trusty. We have to negotiate, yeah. Right. Are you asking for staff to negotiate that? Or if the board wants to discuss it, it's a I, public agenda item. So this is the time that we, we need to discuss that. We could not discuss it as a board. We could not discuss that at any other time. Okay. So this would be your opportunity unless you wanted to well, leave it to staff to negotiate those let's, details. Uh, you know, Keith, just, just, yeah. uh, have, you been, have you been negotiating with the mayor for these contracts? Are you asking me? No, I'm asking for, Keith. For the new contracts or well, for the, what, what we've done in the past? What, yes. we've done, what we've done in the past, have yes. you been negotiating with the mayor to, to get it done? 
In other words, if we allow, if we, if, <coughs> if we agree and we allow the staff to, to figure this out, negotiations, put everything down in writing, then give it to us, mm -hmm. and then we'll look at it, and then staff the mayor will look at it, then he'll bring it to us, and then staff we'll, we'll vote on it. Staff can down with Mr. Bari and come up mm -hmm. with what we mutually think will work mm -hmm. and bring it back to you. Obviously, you're going to have a say still, so if you want to make a change at some point, that's perfectly fine. But um, I can work on getting the terms and then get them to the attorneys so that they can put that together. That's well within something that can be done. All right. Well, okay. Did, Pat, did, did you want to use the uh, handout that was there and, and what the mayor went over as a starting point? I would say we should. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, I mean, it's 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 good. Could be. I mean, he, he, I mean it could be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, right. It could be cleaned up a little bit. But I mean, the talking points, man. I, I mean, he's got a lot of good stuff on here. I'm just saying that what happened is we did this all wrong, and it just it's just not it's just not it's just not right. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Smith, yes, done. I, I would done? like to see. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I'm done. Okay, Mr. Smith. Okay. I would like to see as part of the uh, proposal, though, a youth and a woman's league, uh, at least a proposal as to what they would be wanting to do. I don't know that they could do that next season, but at least plan for it. Okay, I'll include that in our discussion. Okay. Yeah, figure it out with the mayor and sit down with the staff and uh, get, get up some numbers and, you know, bring it to us. Any, yes. Okay, you're going to have a, a staff meeting. Who's going to be on your staff, your committee? Well, it's no, wouldn't it's be, it's keep, the, would not be a committee. No, no, keep, no keep, committee. Or just the staff. Keith just and staff. I will work it out. Right, yeah. right. No committee. You got Doug, Keith, yeah. and the mayor. You guys sit down. Yeah, well, you you would you like to have one trustee involved in that, too? No, I'd rather no. the trustees be out of it so that you can, you know, you can look at it fairly and have an objective opinion of it and not be part of it. Yeah. And Doug, right. what we can do is we can come up with a, with an agreement and put it on the agenda and again just for a discussion regarding the agreement right. to see if there's any changes that anybody would like um, or any additions that anybody would like. And uh, Trustee Pat, he recommended this. Every trustee like this, you know, so. Yeah, just, just, you know, it's just good. It's got to be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, just, Starting place. Any other, ma'am, do you want to? Trustee Mary, do you want to say something? No, yes. I don't want to say okay. anything. Thank Any you. other, Trustee? Okay, Mr. Light. I might like to try this batting thing out once, so can somebody help me out with this? I want to try this at least one time. I want to learn. Yeah, come to the cooker for you. Oh, great. With your pads on. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Okay, so we have reached, a board has reached to an agreement uh, this agreement, uh, cricket, is going with the ACC, and there are uh, there are terms and conditions. Those will be settled by Mayor, Mr. Keith, and uh, uh, Mr. Flint. And I think it will be approved by the board. Yes. Correct. Yes. Final approved by the board. Uh, no, that, yes. After that, by yes, the board. it has to be approved by the board. Yes. Yeah. Is there a time limit? Is there a deadline? This has to be. Done we by. will do in a, like uh, in days, you know. I mean, well, it, certainly we have the holidays, so Keith and I will get to the schedule next week and get with Mr. Barry and see uh, when we can have schedules ready to meet. So you know, I I would the goal would be the next December 9th board meeting would be the goal. I don't see why we can't achieve that goal. Conceptually, if that's done, then uh, the contract should start actually January first, two thousand twenty-two. Then, that, yeah, next year. Yeah, to... you know, it's it, the season's, you know, March through or April through October. So we have we have we have a little wiggle room there. Yeah, we can, we need to give time for them to get schedules, and you know, they, their teams need to know that everything's in place. Uh, I have a suggestion. You know, since the I'm seeing so much back and forth with Mr. Bari and Mir. Why don't we keep uh, Mr. Keith and Doug, you negotiate that contract and then bring it to the mayor and the board? But I think the board should oh, all have oh. an objective look at it and 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Let 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 Keith, Doug, and the mayor let them all sit down and let them figure out the contract. Yeah, we'll do it. You know, I mean, there is a little <laughs> transparency. This is what I wanted. You know, let let I'm not let, against let, anybody. Let them sit yeah. down, these two people, and let them and let them figure out the contract and whatever it comes. If we don't like it when it gets to the board, we won't know. Yeah, right. Welcome. Okay. I mean, oh. it's, it's simple. Okay, any, anybody from our trustee, you know, honorable trustees, anybody wants to say something? Okay, no. So I seek motion to, uh, yes, go ahead. Motion to adjourn. Oh, okay, second. Second. First, second. first is Mr. Uh, trustee Smith, second is uh, trustee Pojak, and roll call, please. So are we going to approve this? Or no voting? There's no vote tonight. There's no vote. <coughs> no. It's only, it's, it was only a discussion roll item. Call. Roll call. Trustee Schmidt. Yes. Okay. Trustee Siddiqui. Yes. Trustee Light. Yes. Trustee Muratano. Yes. Trustee Pojak. Yes. Trustee Schroeder. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Me uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>